I'm just going to take a look at the Nikon D850 after calibration and compare that with the Nikon D500 and D810. Now, the true absolute dynamic range, the D850, is more than this, but uh, this gives you three stops over, three stops under, and perfect exposure for perfect uh, professional light meter calibration for any camera. And as was expected uh, from the image that I saw, I knew we had better dynamic range than D810, but I knew, most importantly, you didn't have uh, specular clipping issues like you do on the Nikon. D500, which is right here, and I have uh, basically 2.9 EV stops, uh, clipping point uh, above my midtone, and over here I have uh, 3.4 actually, 3.4, 3.5. So I've got three quarters of a stop, nearly a stop of uh, additional clipping headroom, which is really important. So as far as a highlight weighted metering, you don't really need to use it that much in the D850, whereas you really do. I can attest to that fact. On the Nikon uh, D500, D500 is going nowhere for me. I mean, it's a wonderful camera. Um, I do additionally have two-thirds of a stop better dynamic range than the D850 than the Nikon D810. Um, both are the exact same pixel pitch over the Nikon D850 is a backside illuminated sensor, completely different sensor technology. So I have a much broader clipping point range and I have better dynamic range between the D850 and the D500. And the question I know that everybody's wanting to ask is uh, what about uh, the Nikon D810? Well, I have right at nearly a stop. Like I said, these are super conservative estimates so you don't actually uh, blow your readings uh, from your Sekonic uh, 858 meter, which is the best light meter that anybody could buy. The uh, Don't blow the specular or shadow clipping points, so the actual true dynamic range is broader, but it's broader in even proportion. Like I said, these are three shots together. This is uh, three stops under, this is three stops over here, and this is the perfect exposure here. And uh, not only taken from the camera, but also estimated from incident meter reading and reflected meter reading. So I actually have three meter readings to uh, give me an, a perfect exposure of which I go three stops above and three stops below. This is an Icon D810 profile. So I have nearly, I have basically right at a stop of better dynamic range on the D850 even though it has a smaller pixel pitch, tighter, smaller, same thing, smaller pixel pitch than the Nikon D810, 4.5 micrometers versus 4.2 I believe. Um, clipping point range, uh, additionally so I have better specular clipping point range on the Nikon D850 than I do on the Nikon D810. Um, as I proved to you in the prior video, I have better saturation per unit of time. Exposure triangle is not ISO. ISO is not connected to exposure. Exposure triangle in digital photography is gain and time, i.e. aperture and shutter speed, and SNR, signal to noise ratio. Given the exact same lens, exact same shutter, and same unit of time, we have better signal to noise ratio, better saturation on the Nikon D850. So I did also notice specifically, outside of the obvious fact that uh, um, that the uh, shadows perform much better on the Nikon D850 and uh, low light, high ISO performance, which is a no duh. The skin tones look a lot nicer. I mean, it's the first thing that really smacked me in the face really hard. Skin tones look nicer on the D850. And considering the fact that Nikon D810, D850 are meant primarily, but also certainly not solely for portraiture, weddings, so on and so forth, that is a real boon. Nikon really pulled off a winner on the D850 output. Everybody else is reporting the same as well. So I hope you like this video. This has uh, been a dynamic range testing and clipping point testing on the D850 as compared to the Nikon D810 and Nikon uh, D500. Also too, if you could actually take a look at these tonal curves, you see the sloping curves up here where I actually have sloping cutoff on my speculars were on the D850 and Nikon D810, specifically much worse on the D500. I actually have sharp cutoffs on my uh, clipping point. In other words, uh, the camera chokes and gags really quickly on speculars. Not so bad on the Nikon D810, but it's definitely bad on the Nikon D500. Well, not bad, but relatively so, but it is uh, much nicer on the D850. I mean, I even noticed that just chimping off the back of the screen first using it. I didn't have to pull up the images, much less do uh, uh, professional dynamic range testing for uh, Sekonic 858 calibration 
to see the obvious after looking at so many images from the D500 and D810 that the D850 was definitely better. Specifically, the skin tones were better. Anyway, thanks for watching. People wanted me to perform this test, and I have performed it. Thank you.